Bonnie Kai in Manhattan, and I'm happy to make today what is arguably the most iconic cocktail of them all, the classic martini. Now you can discuss at home how you like your martinis, whether it's gin or vodka, how much vermouth, if any at all, but there's one thing that everybody agrees on when it comes to the martini, and that is that it must be served cold. So the very first thing I'm going to do is to chill down my glass. Now if you have a freezer at your home bar, you can simply store it there and whip it out when you're ready to serve. Otherwise, it's quite easy just to fill your glass with ice. A little dash of soda, sparkling water will help it chill down quite quickly. But I'm not finished there. I'm also going to chill down the mixing glass, the vessel I'm actually going to build the cocktail in, because temperature is key. So a little ice in here, and what I'll do is I'll just start to stir this down. Again, if you have a freezer, you can keep your mixing glass in there too, and bring it out and it's nice and cold. Otherwise, by stirring a little bit of ice in your mixing glass, you use that ice to chill it down nicely. Now when you're ready to start making your martini, just make sure that you strain out any of that ice melt, which is literally just water, so we have a nice clean start. So for this classic martini, I'm going to use Hendrix Gin, which is my favourite. I'm going to use about a two and a half ounce pour. And to that I'm going to add a little bit of vermouth. Now traditionally in a martini it's all about the marriage between gin and vermouth. Gin is a beautiful botanical herbaceous spirit and vermouth has a similar attribute. So it's a really good flavour combination. So about a quarter to a half ounce of a French dry vermouth is the classic way. And now we're ready to stir our martini. Just add a little more ice. Now stirring a cocktail is a skill you need to practice, but a good tip of advice, put the back of the spoon flush on the inside of the glass, and we're spinning it round and round, up and down, just like the action of a horse on a carousel. And we continue to stir until we've got enough chill factor from the ice, a little bit of dilution just to take the edge off the spirits. And now we're ready to pour our martini. We'll simply discard this ice, give it a little shake, and you can see and I can feel what a beautiful chilled frosted glass we have. And I'm gonna strain this into the martini glass with a little bit of care. And you'll notice that I've stirred this martini rather than shaken it. And some of you might be wondering why. Well, the general rule of thumb is as follows. If your cocktail contains only spirits, it's a good idea to stir it rather than shake it. There's no muddled fruits or egg whites or heavy juices that we need to agitate. The stirring motion allows us to integrate ingredients and chill down our cocktail without spoiling the beautiful texture of a well-made gin, without bruising it. So what you get is a beautiful, crystal clear, elegant and velvety smooth cocktail. It's really worth it. Now, as a garnish, there are many options. Uh, with Hendrix Gin, of course, you could choose to slice a piece of cucumber and drop that in your martini. But a very classic option is to use the peel of a lemon. So what I like to do is to peel the lemon right across the top of the cocktail and then capture the peel, hold it between two hands, and a little snap will release the oils. They dance on top of the cocktail and make the all-important aroma so enticing you just can't wait to sip on your ice-cold classic martini.